our um, committee the whole meeting and really for the uh, um, for the 630 session I'd like uh, to invite Dan DeVries up to um, share the uh, um, budget amendments um, then we can recap the 21 22 budget what that looks like that we'll be approving both of these tonight so um, as Dan is coming up I just I, I think of um, two MVPs for the city this this year through the COVID. Um, one is to our right, um, which is the voice of the uh, the meetings being recorded. Uh, Jason's been um, just a tremendous asset to the city and helping us navigate through the hybrid meetings and so forth. And then I think of Dan, um, really the the um, I feel like you're on a Cedar Point roller coaster ride at times because revenues now we think we're okay and then down and then we're back up and um i think now we're getting state money now we're not now we're getting you know so it, it's really it, it has definitely been a, a ride to say the least um but the one thing that I, I think we all take on behalf of all of us up here um you know takeaway for us is the confidence in that what you're bringing to us is conservative um, which represents our city represents our views up here from a fiscal standpoint but then also um, it really, it's strategic in that we're looking years out. We're not just trying to plug holes or um, do things for this existing year. We're thinking three to five years out. So on behalf of the commission, thank you as you jump into this. And uh, we realize it's gonna be fluid yet. There's some moving parts to it, but uh, um, you're all teed up, so ready to go. Well, thank you. I appreciate those comments very much. Um, yeah, it is gonna be a fluid year again, but um, even even from what you're going to see tonight, where there's already some changes um, that we'll be seeing. Um, nothing bad though, so far so good. <laughs> More positive type things. So, um, as the mayor mentioned, you'd be you'll be um, looking at some budget amendments for the current fiscal year tonight, and then we'll also be looking at the proposed budget. Hopefully, we will be able to adopt that for the 21-22 budget year. Um, the budget amendments are tied in. For the proposed budget so if by if you if you don't approve the amendments which is fine then the whole budget that you're looking at is going to be off too <laughs> just so you're aware <laughs> so um i have a, a powerpoint I'd just like to run through and uh you can look at the 21 22 budget on a very high level but just trying to point out some of the uh, bigger um, things um, you can get really caught up in minutiae very quickly in these types of documents so let's try to look at it a little higher level um, so again, the, the budget was prepared with these different items, you know, priorities established by the commission, um, open and honest communication with department heads, city management and finance, the finance committee and the city commission, um, and then experience and expertise from the Walker staff and, and various consultants that we trust. Now, a couple of years ago, we put together uh, more formally, a uh, capital improvement plan or a CIP plan, which looks five years out. Um, did a lot of work with department heads on getting that up to date again, um, based on what we're, we're seeing um, from revenues and, and this type of thing. So um, State of Michigan website is a very uh, helpful resource um, for state revenue sharing in Act 51, and then also some other relative things that came up. So. Um, just kind of a general principle of the budget that you're gonna be considering. Again, it reflects the goals and priorities identified by the commission. Um, we're continuing to be able to provide quality services and programs in an efficient and cost-effective manner, which is what we're here to do. Um, and then uh, we, again, we're gonna, we need to acknowledge that the COVID pandemic is still out there. Uh, the effects of it are not done yet. And so we're, we tried to reflect that on the budget. Um, again, the revenues are overall in a conservative in nature, and um, we tried really hard to reflect reasonable amounts based on our understanding of the current trends from our different revenue sources. So what that's trying to say is that income tax is affected by the pandemic in one way, but property taxes is affected in a different way, and building is affected, uh, affected in a different way. So some went up, some went down, so we tried really hard to make sure we accounted for that. Um, with the pandemic in mind. And then basically the expenditures were put together to try to match up to what we're projecting for revenues. Um, so uh, that's kind of a long one. I'm trying to read through what we did. <laughs> um, you know, our various uh, equipment purchases, we delayed some stuff. We, we delayed some of our set-asides that we've done in, in some of the past years. Um, 
but we're still able to provide the services that we're here to provide. So um, let's see, yeah, we'll keep going here. The next slide talks about the American Rescue Plan Act or ARPA, and there's a lot of talk about that right now. Um, we're kind of in a spot where we're still, we know we're gonna get some money. We're still waiting to hear what we're gonna get. We're still waiting to understand what we can and cannot use it for. Um, we, based on our population, are a, a little lower tier. Like it's called a non-entitlement unit. Um, so we're, our money comes from the Fed to the state to us, as opposed to like a Grand Rapids, which a larger population goes from the Fed directly to them. So um, we'll be getting our money. We're um, hopefully this summer. Well, hopefully it will be this summer. There's guidelines for that. Uh, we're estimating about 2.4 million that we'll be receiving. And um, the one thing to know is that the, these funds are available for some long-term considerations and that's what they really want you to look at. And um, so there's gonna be time for us to have good discussions to figure out how to uh, really use that money in an effective uh, way. And we don't have to have it spent, well actually until December of 2024 and basically the, Technically, the term is incurred, meaning we have to have everything spoken for by December of 2024, but they still have like an extra year beyond that where you actually have to spend the money. So we've got some time, so that's, that's a good thing. And the one thing to point out on the bottom is that none of that money is reflected in the budget you're considering tonight. Um, basically, there's too many questions yet, and so we're not gonna account for it yet. And when we do get to that point, it will be considered its own fund. It won't be tied into the general fund. We'll account for it separately, so. That was a recommendation by the state. So, and I think it's good practice too. In terms of the expenditures, um, just again, at a very high level, we we proposed a two and a half percent cost of living adjustment. Um, some of the bigger ticket items then will follow. Um, we, we did the website upgrade uh, is in there. We can talk about that. Uh, the income tax scanning machine, I know that's come up a couple different times. We initially had budgeted for it this current year. Um, after some visits uh, by Jason and, and Julie to Grand Rapids, they decided we weren't quite ready for it yet. So we took it out of this year, but they also realized that the, the machine and the software was more than what they had been initially led to believe. So this number is a bit higher than what we had seen before, um, but that's more of a true cost in today's world. Um, continued commitment to making an additional pension liability payment of 150, we've been pretty consistent with that. Um, we'd like to be able to get to an OPEB set aside additional payment, which we've done, we did a couple years ago, but uh, things aren't looking like that's the highest priority right now. So <laughs> hopefully that's something we could potentially add in at some point. Um, some HVAC upgrades that Gary Postma has identified, parking lot repairs. Um, in the current fiscal year, we did no uh, new fitness equipment to WIFIC, and this year we've added in 20,000. Um, as that starts to come back online. From the road funds, um, again, we'll have 800,000 in overlays uh, throughout the city, 400 for major streets, 400 for local streets. That's been the level we've had for the last couple of years. In terms of projects, last year we had a big, big, big number of projects. This year it's, it's down basically just to the Kinney Avenue improvements, which are in going on right now. That uh, expense is covered over two fiscal years. So that's, it's really a $2 million expense, but a million is uh, in this current fiscal year and a million in the next. Um, single, excuse me, single construction at uh, Fruit Ridge and North Ridge, and then also Alpine Avenue uh, resurfacing project is coming. Um, those are from Scott. Um, this next slide talks more about our, our equipment, uh, vehicles, that type of thing. Um, the top one is the highest priority um, for DPW, for Gary, um, basically the, all the, the big trucks. <laughs> he, he would like to get to a point where we're, we're getting a new one replacement truck every year. And so he switched to Peterbilt trucks over the last couple of years. He said it's been a very good change and would like to continue on with that. So that was on his wish list in terms of if anything, he's willing to give up everything else except for the truck. <laughs> um, there's some other, um, you know, trailers and that type of thing. The fourth bullet down is the police cruisers, and this is gonna look like a huge number. Um, historically, we've replaced two cruisers per year. Um, we, we've been 
wanting to go to three because the usage is so much. And um, so last year we actually had one that was in an accident, got totaled out. And so we were gonna have to do three for this current fiscal year with insurance proceeds paying for the third replacement. Unfortunately, with all the manufacturing being the way it is, we haven't gotten those three yet. <laughs> and they think it won't be till at least August. So next fiscal year, we've budgeted for three. So there's gonna be six that we're gonna take in in the next fiscal year is what we are anticipating. So that's why it's a huge number. It's not normal, but that's, that's why it's a big number. Um, again, fire turnout gear, we made a decision a couple of years ago that we would do um, 20 sets per year. Uh, over a 10 year cycle that would make uh, all the gear be replaced. Um, the tender one fire truck um, has a tank that needs to be replaced and then a thermal imaging uh, unit for uh, the fire department. And one thing to point out that's listed on the bottom is that um, these are all owned by that capital equipment fund, which is funded by uh, revenues, basically rental fees to the different uh, departments that use them. Uh, we went back and were able to look a little more closely at what police expenses were versus fire versus DPW. And so some of the uh, rates have been adjusted to try to better reflect what those true costs are and to try to get that fund back up to where it needs to be. So those are reflected both in the budget amendments and in the budget for 21-22. Um, set asides, uh, we talked just a little bit about those basically um, again, we'd like to have some money that we could put into OPEB set aside into the facility sinking fund. We set those up a few years ago, but as we haven't just haven't been able to add to it just because of the way the economics have been lately. Um, the 50,000 to uh, whip a capital improvement, we have been doing that historically for a number of years. So that's nothing new. Um, but I'll point out then at the end, it will say on the end of that sentence that you'd have a total of 208,000 in reserve at the end of the next fiscal year, that does take into account paying for the Zamboni. So that has been deducted from that. So we'll still have 200,000 in there. And then transfers to other funds. This is basically where the general fund helps supplement uh, some of the costs of the other funds. Um, the top one is to major streets. That one's way lower than last year. Last year was about a million, um, but the projects are down. So that's why um, 350 to local is what we've done the last couple of years. The 450 to WIPIC, um, is um, a little bit higher, but again, that is reflecting what's going on with WIFIC, unfortunately, with the pandemic effects. So they need some more uh, to help on that at this point. And then that last little bit, the 30,000, I'm gonna, I'll talk about that a little bit later, but that's basically for a bond payment. Um, that's, we're almost done with, but I have a, I think that's on the next slide. I would rather talk about it there. <laughs> In terms of debt, um, again, we're in really good shape. The general fund and major and local streets have no debt whatsoever. Um, the capital equipment fund has the um, payment for the uh, fire truck that we purchased last year. Um, we have the next second payment would be due September of this year. That's um, listed there at the 412,971. Uh, we can't pay that off early. So that's a, that's a three year deal. So it'll be September of the following year and that will be done and gone. DDA continues to pay on their fire station in uh, Standale area, but we're almost done with that. May of 2023 will be done. And then this last one is the River Bend water main. That was the water, public water that was installed in the River Bend area in 2009. Um, when we did that bond, we were anticipating special assessment monies to come in from the property owners that would cover that. A lot of property owners paid early which was to their advantage, but wasn't to ours because we didn't get the interest <laughs> that we were gonna charge uh, on that special assessment. So that was like a four, they were getting charged four and a half percent roughly. And we were only able to invest at, you know, whatever it is, <laughs> which is nowhere close to four anymore. <laughs> so the, the general fund basically has to supplement that payment where the city's on the hook for that bond payment, no matter what. Um, we will get some of that back eventually, but um, it's a cash, timing issue at this point. Okay, so then uh, switching specifically to the general fund, the next few slides are, are mainly just specifically general fund related. Of course, that's our main fund. Um, 
you'll see on the third bullet point, the main sources of revenue, which I'm sure you're all aware of, income tax is obviously our big one, uh, two thirds, basically. Um, state revenue sharing is 13% um, and property tax is about 10. So that's uh, the majority of our, our revenue sources. This is just a graphic illustration of the proposed 21-22 budget um, showing you know, where the revenue sources are. So obviously you can see where income tax comes and, and the others. So uh, then the next part is uh, the same type of deal for the expense part of it. And you'll see that in the middle is where the, the big expenses with police and then fire just to the right of it. So that public safety component, those are the biggest two expenses for the city. And then working your way way over towards the right, you'll see the OPEB and pension is a significant amount. Basically at this point, it's, it's all pension. It's really not any OPEB. Uh, probably should have just put pension on this particular slide. <laughs> um, the transfers out way at the very end. We had talked about those a couple of slides prior. And then other city um, is the third from the end. And that's kind of the great catch all of everything else. So such things as um, property and liability insurance, uh, the gypsy moss spraying, retiree health care, various other little things, but those were like the big, the big ticket items. Um, so then the next slide is basically trying to show um, the blue is our expenses, the orange are our revenues. And so that little green sliver is basically what the amount of fund balance that needs to be used to make it make it work or make it balance out. So that's just trying to give you a graphic idea of how that works. And this slide is um, basically, as you will recall, hopefully that we have a fund balance policy established that we cannot budget to go below 15% of our unassigned fund balance it has to be at least 15% of our current year expenditures. And so this is doing the math related to it. So the top line basically is what our last audit showed as unassigned fund balance. And then the next one is what we're gonna take based on our current year budget, plus the amendments would be the 1.4 million. You take that off, you get a projected to fund, unassigned fund balance for two weeks from now, basically. <laughs> then you do the same thing with the budget that's before you tonight. You get to the 3 million of unassigned fund balance for a year from now, our, our budget, expenditures below of 18 million and you're at 16.52. So we're above the 15. That again is very conservative. One thing I kind of missed on here, but one of, our, one of the things that we have is for example, our state revenue sharing. When our last finance committee met, they had projections out there and we went with those. Um, Commissioner Gilbert said those are gonna get updated. Well, I, they got updated after I put this together. So I looked today and they're already projecting for next year, 100,000 more <laughs> for state revenue sharing. So if you add 100,000 to this, suddenly that percentage you know, takes a, a, a difference. And the current year we're in too, they're also making a, a nice projected increase. So, so uh, the 16 is probably a low number to be honest with you. So any questions on that so far? <laughs> um, this again is trying to graphically uh, represent our fund balance uh, in the general fund. So the red line above is our entire fund balance. So that includes um, not only the unassigned stuff that isn't spoken for, shall we say, but stuff that is already spoken for. So like our OPEB set aside fund, that's part of that red line. The buildings facility set aside fund, that's part of that red line. Uh, the gray line or blue line below it is would be comparable to what that 16% is what, uh, so you can see that we've done pretty well over the years. And um, so there again, I think that 16 is gonna be rather low. Um, Dan, if I could just jump in yeah. on that one. Uh, and those are, that last slide was all from our audited numbers. Thank so you. end of the yeah. year. So when our audit is complete for this fiscal year, I'm very confident it's gonna be more than. Yeah probably a lot better than it looks at that 16%. So mm -hmm. I think we'll be somewhere in the same range as we've seen the past year. We have a lot of savings in departments, but we have two more weeks to go. So we, we right. can't make that call quite yet. So, right. so I think Dan's right. It probably will be much, or at least higher than that 16%. Yeah. So. 
And that, that's a good point to bring up because the department's head have, have taken it very seriously this year and they've been very good about their budgets. So, I mean, from an expense standpoint, they've been very careful and that, that helps when you get to this point too. So it's much appreciated. Um, this next slide is just basically my way of trying to show again, there are different revenue sources. The blue is the property tax. The green is the state revenue sharing and the orange is the income tax. The scale is such that it's hard to see, but really the blue and the green continue to, to grow. <laughs> the orange is the one that, that fluctuates. So um, this, this slide basically is just showing, talking about the other funds, major funds that we have uh, in the city. We have our fund 202 and 203, which are our local and major street funds where we do all the, you know, pay the, the employees that work out on the roads and um, all the repairs that go with it. 206 we've talked about before, which is the capital equipment fund where the rental rates are the, the key driver of that. Um, 2, 262, the special vice, we get some money from the state and from um, the KNET, I think it is, uh, for uh, drugs and drug forfeiture money and, and drunk driving monies. That, that's just dwindling down to nothing, but we still have a little bit there. Those are, that money's basically used for special projects for those. Um, we have some DDA funds, we have the Brownfields funds, um, WIPIX on there, revolving fund at the end. Um, and again, that last one is that special assessment debt for the River Bend area. So basically we get down to this slide, which is uh, saying the city overall has 22 different funds. Um, the, the state is specific as to certain ones have to have Everyone should have a budget, but certain ones have to be approved by the commission. And so basically that last little bit is showing you which funds are specified that have to go through on the resolution. And so those numbers would tie into the actual resolution you have in front of you tonight. So 25.4 million for the, all of those. So again, thanks to everyone for their work and, and commitment to this whole process. And I'm happy to answer any questions or, or whatever you want. Turn that on. There we go. Commissioners, any questions for Dan? Yeah, I have a question. Um, sure. Can you just explain that um, fund balance a little bit more? I feel like that's something that um, a lot of residents probably struggle with. Maybe it, members are a little unclear on what that means. So if you could maybe sure unpack that just a little bit. Yeah, okay. I'll do my best. Yeah, it, it is a it's an interesting concept because it uh, people think of fund balance in different ways. But basically. The way I look at it is it's your accumulated revenues less your accumulated expenses. So sometimes someone would refer to it maybe as profit or something like that, but it's basically the accumulation of resources less what you spent. And you have to, by law, continue to keep having more. You can't, you can't overspend, obviously. <laughs> so, um, but it gets, it gets hard in the general fund because when you start looking through some of those audit numbers, um, the auditors are pulling in different parts and classifying them a little bit differently um, because some are like, for example, part of our full fund balance in the general fund are monies that we have for the Brooklawn Cemetery. Those monies are not available to be used to pay for salaries or for utilities or that. And so you have to take that bit of the fund balance and pull it out and so that was kind of what that red line was showing on here is that that would include say that particular um, monies that are set aside, designated for something specific. The unassigned fund balance is basically money available to use for salaries, for repairs, for that type of thing. They're not specifically geared to a very specific thing. For, and then again, like those OPEB, that OPEB set aside that money can only be used for OPEB related expenses. So we have to pull that out. That's not part of an unassigned fund balance. It's a specifically assigned or restricted, or they have these very unique terms for all that stuff. <laughs> but uh, does that does that help? Yeah, so would you say that the unassigned fund balance is essentially like a savings account that we can draw on yeah. when we need a little extra money? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep, Thanks. exactly. Mm -hmm. Great. Yep. Appreciate it. Sure. Yeah. Commissioners, any other questions, comments? Nice um, job as always, Dan. Oh, thank Thanks you. Thanks for all the detail.
Yeah, thank thanks. you for all your hard work too. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and I think to, to bring us home unless the managers have anything else. No, just, just one quick comment and more on the, you know, the, the COVID responses as the finance committee heard and the commission heard this year, we, we amended our budget down a million and a half dollars as a result of our current year budget. And we made some cuts. So thanks to all the departments for all the efforts they've done for everything. And Dan Specific to the income tax revenue. Exactly. Yeah, so yeah. there's been delayed equipment purchases, delayed set aside. So, and then we've carried that forward through this year, as you see in the budget for our revenue for income tax, we're proposing 10 and a half million dollars. Again, uh, conservatively, we think we'll probably do better next year with things opening up more and some of our big employers having people back in the office, but we just don't know yet. So I think we've had a, a good practice over the years of amending the budget midway as we, you know, seen how the trends are going. So just, you know, we did take a hit on that. The, the ARPA money will help us out uh, mm -hmm. on some of that. So hopefully we can get some of our projects or equipment back in there if they're eligible. But I think it's a, it's a good solid budget and kudos to Dan and the staff for, for working hard on this and keeping us compliant and still, trying to maintain our staff and our services and not having to lay anybody off as a result of it, like some of the other cities or even cut any of our services. So, uh, and thanks to the commission, obviously, for all your support throughout yeah. the whole process. Yeah, yeah on, on the income tax, just uh, on the amendments, just to make sure that's pointed out there, we had bud we had started at 12 for this current fiscal year. We amended down to 10 and a half. Now we're gonna amend back up to 11. So things have, gone a bit better than what we initially had thought in terms of this current fiscal year. So we're hoping maybe that we'll go forward for the next, but uh, we're not ready to make that call yet. <laughs> Good, well, Daryl brought us home, so nothing I can add to those comments. Um, commissioners, one last chance, anything else on the finance? Otherwise we'll let Dan get to a, hopefully a warm meal at some point. Well, I can stick around for the, I'll make sure you get through the- um, Oh, gotcha, the stuff. budget stuff, yeah. good, good point. Yeah. Yep. All right, let's uh, committee the whole chief. If you want to we'll make a transition, um, let the crowd get settled in so we can start right at seven then. Thank you. Yeah. Nobody wants those front row seats, do they? <laughs> yeah. Are we holding those for the ones coming in late? Yeah. 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 The walk. The walk of shame, right? Yeah. All right. We got some takers there. There we go. Well, we'll go ahead. We're close enough to seven o'clock. Uh, welcome everyone. Um, it has been at least a year and a half since seeing this many people in here. So on behalf of the city of Walker, the city commission, uh, it's great to see all of you here. I, we know why you're here, but uh, it's just nice to see all the, uh, the normalcy starting to come back into our lives. So welcome. Um, we'll go ahead and call our city commission meeting to order. Um, I'll ask Commissioner Glanville to deliver the invocation this evening, please. Thank you. Um, 
So I offer this invocation in honor of Pride Month and the upcoming Juneteenth celebration. It was written by a dear friend of mine. Um, and I hope it serves as an invitation reminder of how we can strengthen our community here in Walker. Almighty God, who has created everything, we are thankful for our lives and opportuni the opportunities we've been given. And we are grateful for the imprints others make on our hearts and minds. And in the midst of suffering that happens for all of us every day, I pray that as we continue our earth journey, we all be a little gentler, compassionate, fully present and intentional with our relationships. Give us strength to live full of love and wholehearted so those around us have a fuller, richer experience of our wonderfully created true selves. Amen. Thank you, Commissioner. I'd like to uh, ask the audience to please stand and join us for a Pledge of Allegiance, please. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, Thank you, everyone. If I could please ask our clerk to call the roll. Mayor Carey. Present. Commissioner DeShane. Present. Commissioner Glanville. Present. Commissioner Groters. Present. And Commissioner Chase. Present. Thank you. And if I could add a approval in here for the absence of our newly married uh, Commissioner Gilbert. Uh, do we have a motion to excuse his absence? I'll make that motion. Thank you, Commissioner Support. DeShane. Uh, Groters, thank you. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? You can enjoy your Sunday moon. Thank you. All right. Next on the list is approval of minutes from the May 24th, 2021 uh, meeting. Are there any questions on the minutes? Otherwise, I'll entertain a motion for approval and support, please. I'll make a motion. Thank you. Support. Chase and Glanville, thank you. Any other discussion on the minutes? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Minutes are passed. Thank you. Uh, next on the list is we will now open the public hearing for anyone wishing to speak on the proposed fiscal year 2021-2022 uh, budget. And anyone wishing to speak on the budget and the budget alone, please come forward to the microphone. Going once, going twice. All right, our hearing is closed. Thank you. Um, any public comment on agenda items outside of the budget? Anyone going once, going twice. All right, we'll move on. Chief, the floor is yours. Well, I agree with you, Mr. Mayor, that uh, it is nice to see a room full of people again. It's been a long time coming, especially for a couple of our officers here, uh, two of them of which started last August with us. So we've been waiting quite a time to uh, have this ceremony. I want to thank all their family and friends for being as patient as they've been. But uh, we're very pleased tonight that, to be able to do this uh, service and this ceremony for these four great officers that we were lucky enough to employ some time ago. We have Jake Newberry, who started with us in August of 2020. Next to him is Jordan Starr. She started, as she reminds me, a day later, but she should have seniority because of age or something she's claiming, but <laughs> it just didn't work that way. So Jordan's next. Then we have Jonathan Stevens, who started with us in December of 2020. And then lastly, but of course not least, is Zach Pasternick, and he started with us in January of 21. So we've had him uh, here for quite a while waiting for this opportunity to, to perform this service tonight. Uh, I can share with you that, that every one of them have successfully passed field training, and they're all out on their own, solo, which is a really good sign. And a couple of them are coming up on their probationary status, which is going to be very nice for them, I'm sure. Uh, but in the meantime, this is our opportunity to recognize and to celebrate your accomplishments with family and friends. But before we do that, I want to just share a few thoughts with you that I traditionally share with our new hires. And I probably shared with you when we uh, met in my office when I first had the opportunity to meet you. But tonight, the symbolism of pinning this badge will probably remain as one of the biggest highlights of, as you progress through your career. This is a very important event. The symbolism is deep rooted in longstanding traditions it's much bigger than act, the act of just receiving the badge. When you receive this badge, you are accepting the oath of honor and will be promising to protect and serve the community with honor, dignity, and respect for all people. The honor portion of our oath refers to the word representing a bond of truth in what you are saying as your personal guarantee to carry it out. Walk in the walk, not just talking the talk. You've heard me say that before. 
All citizens are the customers of your service. You will treat them with respect and courtesy as you are now part, now part of a profession that expects all members to adhere to the highest ethical standard. The dignity is the personal principles which you possess, which frames your ethical foundation. The ethics you will follow in both your professional and personal life as you represent our agency and the law enforcement profession. The most important value for a police officer is one of integrity. It is, it is who we are on the inside. It's what we are. How we act and what we do when no one is watching us. And always remember this, no one can take away our integrity. We can only give it away. Make sure your behavior is above reproach. The respect is the manner in which you'll treat all people. Your character qualities which will distinguish you as an individual with the highest of values. You will be held accountable for your actions while interacting with the community, exercising an unbiased and impartial demeanor towards all citizens. You will not engage in any discriminatory behavior, ensuring not to tolerate such behavior in yourself, or more importantly, in others that you work with. Remember why you chose this career, serving the community with the honor, the dignity, the respect that all deserve. Take pride in this chosen profession. profession. Work diligently to provide a safe community for all and always remember your efforts do matter. Remember to stay grounded, humble, and dedicated to serving with a positive attitude and a guardian heart. Your attitude is like a common cold. It can be contagious. Therefore, your attitude should include a degree of humility, embracing the opportunities to make a difference and remain open to learning new things as you progress through your career. The job of a police officer is one that is very stressful demanding and requires shift work, as you all know. With all the negatives we face on a daily basis, we have to remember to keep things in perspective. We cannot always change the world, but we can affect the city of Walker one day at a time, one shift at a time to make it a better community. With that said, we must keep at the forefront why we chose this career. Service to others, protecting victims, solving crimes, ensuring safe communities, and you can take pride in this profession of doing what many will not. Lastly, most importantly, never forget the role these folks played in getting to where you're at tonight. They will always be your constant supporter, your motivator, and accountability managers. Do this job with a purpose and the pride to honor their sacrifices and commitment they made to get you here. They deserve it. So you see this badge that you're gonna be receiving tonight is much more than a symbol of authority to be worn on the outside of the uniform. It is a privilege, it's not a right. It will be a constant reminder of your personal commitment to serve with that honor, that dignity, that respect, and the courage as a Walker police officer. And for that, I say thank you and welcome aboard to the agency. So at this point, I'd like to issue your oath of uh, office I know you've done it with the clerks, but this is the ceremonial one. So if you please raise your right hand, we'll do it as a group. As a Walker police officer, you are to act as an official representative of our city and are required and trusted to work within the law. Your powers and duties as a police officer are conferred upon you by the state of Michigan by statute. Your fundamental duties as an officer include serving the community, safeguarding lives and property, protecting the innocent, keeping the peace, and ensuring the rights of all to liberty, equality, and justice. Our expectations are that you will perform all your duties impartially, without favor or affection or ill will, and without regard to status, sex, race, relation, political belief, or aspiration. All citizens will be treated equally with courtesy, consideration, and dignity. Do you all swear to perform these duties? All right, and since we have a number of them up here, I'm gonna ask that we have the opportunity for each officer to receive their badge uh, individually. So we're gonna start with Officer Newberry and his mom Kay will perform the pinning of Jake's badge tonight. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah. Feel free to mingle if you need pictures. That's the next chief, that's why he... <laughs> He's got to figure it out. He's in charge. 
And I'll share with you afterwards, after we do the pinning, we're gonna have each individual officer come up, give a little introduction. So we'll have that opportunity to do, how about a great big joint celebration after we do all four of them. It's been a while since we've done this, so I gotta catch back up on how we're doing things. Next up, Officer Starr, and she will be pinned by her spouse, Jewel. to practice. <laughs> Officer Stevens will be pinned by his spouse, Amanda. <coughs> and Officer Pasternak will be pinned by his girlfriend, Olivia. So commissioners, family members, I present to you the four newest officers for the city of Walker Police Department. Congratulations. <laughs> All of each one of them, each one of them introduce themselves, give you a little background, and then afterwards we'll come up and uh, greet them, okay? Hi there. I, uh, my name is Jake Newberry, by far probably the youngest police officer here. I'm 22 years old. Uh, graduated from Grand Rapids Community College Police Academy. Uh, grew up in the area in Granville. Went to elementary school all through high school in Granville. Um, spent a lot of time in Standale uh, growing up with my friends. So I've always kind of known the area. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, I want to really say thank you for giving me the opportunity to work here for the city. And uh, yeah, that's all I got. So, Welcome, Jake. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Jordan Starr. Um, I went to Grand Valley State University originally for teaching. I taught in Grand Rapids Public Schools for four years prior to coming here and completing GRCC's Academy with Jake. Um, that's why I rag on him for being so young. But, <laughs> um, but I just want to say thank you for the last 10 months. It's honestly been the best city I think in the county to work for. Um, talking to other people, we have amazing uh, community. Everyone seems to be supportive. You hear other stories and you couldn't have a better turnout in Walker when we go to calls. So I appreciate everything you guys have done and hopefully we can continue that. Thank you. My name is Jonathan Stevens and I'm also 22 actually, but I'm turning 23 in a week. So I do have a JP. <laughs> um, yeah, so I've been with the Walker Police Department for seven months now. I went through Fair State University's Academy and I grew up in the Big Rapids area, Morley Stanwood specifically, and um, went to the Grand Rapids area just because I knew I had heard a lot of good things about the city of Walker, about the department, about just the area. And my wife, Amanda, is in medical school to become a pediatrician in the area also. So. Um, yeah, we really enjoyed the area. I've loved working for the city and also I would like to thank you guys for giving me and us that opportunity. So thank you. Great, thanks. I'm Zachary Pasternak. I grew up in Gaylord, Michigan, um, 25 years old. I went to the Kirtland Regional Police Academy. Um, I just wanna thank you guys for the opportunity again, as they all said. I want to thank my support system. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to many more years here. Thank you, Zach. You know, when I, I look at the, the four over there, as uh, you'll make the walk up here in just a second, um, 
when I think of Zach there, Zach's been very modest because of his, uh, uh, forgot to mention too, his years of service uh, already in the United States Army. So thank you for that. And uh, when I remember uh, talking with each one of the four and they passed the background test and uh, everything else, that's the official one. And uh, I think they bring something unique. Zach's obviously outside the area, but brings that military experience and problem solving, uh, which we, uh, need on a day-to-day -day basis. And then when I think of Jonathan coming from up north as well, we don't get a lot of Ferris State um, you know, uh, uh, school grads, so it's great to see uh, that, that there a little bit. And if we are driving around the Walker area uh, at night at all, and we hear somebody singing uh, out loud, it's usually Jonathan thinking he's got his golden pipe. So uh, <laughs> he claims to have them anyway. And then um, Jordan, I, I think, um, as I've gotten to know her, the four years in public education, you're just a glutton for punishment for jumping from that to uh, law enforcement. So uh, thank you much. And then um, really, Jake, I, are your mom and dad not uh, law enforcement, if I'm not mistaken? So so uh, that, that's pretty cool and following the footsteps of it. So they've got to be very proud as we all are. So um, all four of you bring something unique, something special to the department. And uh, you're right, it's a great community, but uh, you have a lot of proud city commissioners and uh, mayor and city managers and clerk up here. So thank you for all you do. Um, we have tradition as you come in, we can finally handshake, fist bump, whatever you want to do. Um, we make this little walk around the uh, back of the commission dais so we can all get a chance to say congratulations and welcome aboard. So uh, Zach, if you want to lead us coming around there, come on up. Thank you. Chief, yep. This this would be my last swear in, so I just want to. You just can't leave that microphone, can you? I know, I love it. <laughs> I haven't met a microphone I don't love. So I just want to share with the family once again. Thank you very kindly for coming out. Thank you for being patient, uh, taking the opportunity to come here. I think it's extremely important that we honor and celebrate the achievement of these fine young officers. And each one of them said the same thing, is that they uh, love it here. And there's a reason they love it here is because we have a darn good police department. It's because of people like that. So once again, I want to thank all of you for coming out and remind you, if they haven't told you yet, back at the police department, we have some treats. We have some coffee and some cupcakes. They probably didn't share that with you. But more importantly, I want to have the opportunity for you to come back and let them show you where their dive is, where they're working, what it looks like, and uh, the, the inside of the department. So feel free to follow them back, and we'll be back there sooner or later, and we'll save you all some cupcakes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I don't you. think so. Yeah, <laughs> there won't be any left. Probably not. <laughs> thank you much. Appreciate yeah, thank it. you, Chief. All right. You're free to go. All. Thank you. Good, thanks. Oh boy. That would have been on eBay in a little while.
All right, we'll keep rolling here. Um, next on the list is the consent agenda. Um, the expenditures in the amount of $674,709.93. Are there any questions on the bills? Otherwise, I'll entertain a motion and approval for, for support um, for approval. I'll make a motion. Support. support. Oh, thank you. Chase, Commissioner Groders. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? All right, can pay the bills. We're good. Next up on the list are uh, three items. Uh, Daryl, turn over to you on the first one, just for the quick background. But uh, first is our annual exercise, Resolution 21-603 to approve certification of delinquent special assessments to the 2021 summer property tax roll. Yeah, this you see annually, these are people that don't either, there's two cases here, there's some Riverbend payments and there's some DDA uh, streetscape payments. Typically what happens, they don't pay it when they get the bill and then it gets thrown onto their tax bill and they always, pay it through that method instead. So Dan can clarify anything, but it's a annual annual ritual, unfortunately, that we have to go through. And a legal procedure that yes. we have to, yeah. yeah. Okay. We do get any, all the money eventually. Commissioners, any questions on that? Otherwise, I'll entertain a motion for approval and support, please. I'll make a motion. Mr. Shane. Support. Mr. Glanville. Um, thank you. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? All right, resolution 21-603 is passed. Next on the list, uh, we covered in the 630 Committee of the Whole meeting, resolution 21-604 to amend the City of Walker fiscal year 2020-2021 budget. Um, as Dan shared with us, it's obviously been a very fluid year. Um, that um, I'm not sure if there's a more appropriate word, but uh, um, it, it's very fluid, it's still moving. So, um, and uh, we'll be even uh, uh, for a couple of months here. So as we get through the audit. So that being said, if there's no other questions on that, seeing none, I'll entertain a motion for approval and support, please. I'll make a motion. Chase. Support. Commissioner Groders, thank you. Uh, any other discussion on the amendments to this year's fiscal year budget? All right, um, we have a motion from Commissioner Chase, support for Commissioner Groders. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Resolution 21-604 to amend the budget is passed. Next on the list is next year's fiscal budget, uh, resolution 21-605 to adopt the City of Walker fiscal year 2021-2022 budget. Um, again, we've covered this in the 630 uh, committee, the whole meeting. Is there any other discussion on next year's budget? Otherwise, I'll entertain a motion for approval and support, please. I'll make a motion. Mr. DeShane. I'll support. Mr. Glanville, thank you. Um, any other discussion on next year's fiscal year budget? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Our budget is passed for next year. Nice job, everyone. Um, next on the list is any public comment on agenda items or non-agenda items? Anybody? Yes, please, if you would uh, step forward to the mic. There's a button there. Can't tell if that red light's on or not. You press. Thank there you. And if, just for the record, you share your name and address and um, the floor is yours. Okay. Thank you. Carla Allenhart and I'm at 2670 Rolling Ridge Lane. So it's uh, District 1, I believe, for you guys. Okay. Yeah. So I made an inquiry at the Recreation Department about pickleball courts uh, about a year ago and learned that they had been closed by um, request of some residents that live nearby. Um, it had been my hope that over time that would be resolved and they would be reopened. So I'm here tonight um, at the suggestion of the um, rec department to talk with the commissioners about that. Um, first, to get some information about how that decision was made. And secondly, to um, encourage you to reconsider the decision to close the courts right here. Um, could I get information about sure. how that decision yeah. was made? Um, I'll be happy to jump in for the, okay. the, the dialogue piece here. So what had happened in putting that court there um, on the front end of it, I don't think we understood the noise decibel uh, levels that was gonna be next to the houses right there uh, on those courts. Um, unfortunately, we were in violation of our own noise ordinances 
because of the loudness of the ball hitting the paddle. That's a problem. And that's a problem. <laughs> and so um, the city's breaking its own law, so to speak, if you will. So, um, you know, plus, quite frankly, the um, being on the uh, the back end of it, um, as the city managers were well aware, um, I the, especially last year and the pandemic greatly influenced it. There was not a single night, not a single morning that I did not get a text or a phone call after 9 30 10 at night and there was not a single morning um, that I can remember for months that I did not get a text or phone call between 6 and 6 30 in the morning from those neighbors that were out there so on behalf of the commission um, we're all very accessible we give our cell numbers out and sometimes there's a um, uh, you know, when you're, when you're that available, it, 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 uh, um, it's a good thing, but it's also getting to be a challenging thing because I'm hearing from the voice of the residents back there, um, this is not working. And then when we did the measurement of the noise decibels, um, we realized we, we have something, we have a problem we have to solve here real quick. So what we have done right now is, um, community park, this is probably a multi-step process. Um, we immediately knew community park, we used to have them there originally when we were first experimenting to see is this something our community would embrace, which is why we went um, um, to the development back here. So we that is back set up at community park. We're also experimenting, um, and I don't think that that's completely finalized, and back of central um, school back there on the old tennis courts. And Daryl, I'm not sure if we've... Um, I know yeah. we're working with the school on that. There's two courts there available right now. They're not not in the, not as nice as the ones back here, but there are two nets up and they're set up. And they, they have, have since accurate school. height nets and the lines that are for pickleball as opposed yes. to tennis. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. So there's two courts set up at least now back up where the old tennis courts are behind the middle school. And, and the well. school has been great in working with us to help us um, again try and help solve it because it's it's a park that's been busy. That the pickleball courts it was interesting because we were one of the very few cities, um, very, very few cities that on within Kent County that upon advice from the health department, they had said, don't close your parks. Um, so we did it. And where other municipalities had closed their parks, we did not So we had all that traffic come in here. So the problem was um, probably um, a lot more amplified, um, uh, no pun intended there, than, than what we were used to having. So, um, but we knew we still had a problem, even if we took that traffic away. And um, so we have those courts existing right now. Um, we continue to look for other opportunities. Um, I know Commissioner Glanville is heading up um, revamping our Parks and Recreation Committee. And part of that is going to be what amenities, um, um, what other services can we provide our residents. Um, and, and we really don't look at our the city limit signs as the boundaries. Um, we want when we have people out exercising um, physically and mentally, it's a good thing. So um, we're happy to entertain people from the west side, from Talmage, um, Alpine Township, um, because we'll also use theirs, um, you know, at different times. So that being said, it's th there's a multi-step piece. So right now um, we have three available, where we only had two before, I think, back there, if I remember right. So four. So we have three available, um, and then continue to look for more. And um, we do realize it's 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 an issue, but it's not something that's like easily fixed overnight. Mm -hmm. And as you heard a little bit with the budget. Uh, items two tonight to make the new courts. Um, there's a, a five to six figure cost with those. Right. And right now we're just balancing all those priorities out to make sure that we, um, the, the very essential things we have, we make sure to do those. And then this will be that part of that next phase then. I'm new to this um, Walker City. Sure. And um, I'm wondering if there are any other like basketball courts or things that aren't highly utilized right around the city hall in this this region that might be inexpensively uh, considered as a an option no it's a great question actually the the old tennis courts in back of central on the uh, back edge on the north side of the park there that's a great example of you of repurposing courts that really weren't being used mm -hmm. um and um uh, obviously they don't have that nice shiny surface that's brand new right. that the others had they're still very workable services. The nets are regulation, the lines are striped. Mm -hmm. um, so you're still able to play it there. It just doesn't maybe look as nice as something brand new, but we did uh, do, do that. Um, I know we just, we continue to look at them. We keep coming back to that noise measurement piece. Mm -hmm. And um, um, probably the easy thing to do was to turn to a deaf ear to um, uh, what 
we had going on back here. That's that's not the that's not how Walker does things. Mm -hmm. um, we listen to our residents, and it's tough because we had some residents saying Correct. we want it there, <laughs> right. but then the ones that live there that are impacted and their quality of life really suffered. Okay. So no great Thank questions. You for the Thank you. Um, and I think the, it's great for the commission to hear this mm -hmm. because it is at the forefront of um, um, as our monies are freed up here and opportunities. Um, if we can turn those tennis courts back there into something on a, on a, on a actually a very quick basis that didn't take us very long to do. Um, and we did it really quietly, but it, it's, uh, um, those opportunities are probably out there. Um, now it just comes down to the budget piece. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Any other questions? Anything else from the public? All right. Um, public comment close. We'll jump to Commissioner City Manager comments. Um, we'll start down on the right tonight with our clerk. Um, this is usual. We're working on um, working on getting ready to mail ballots out. They're expected on Wednesday, so we're hoping to get them out on Thursday. Otherwise, it might not be till Monday. Thank you. Good. Thank you, Commissioner Glanville. Um, yeah, a couple of things. So uh, first, I just want to say um, thank you to everyone who's worked on the budget, um, you know, Dan, and of course, the Finance Committee and all the department heads. Um, I appreciate that we do have a bit of a conservative take on uh, finances here in Walker and just um, talking about the fund balance, you know, it just demonstrates the importance of having the, all those monies you know, available to us to cover a year like this, um, which luckily is not turning out to be quite as bad as we thought it might. But, um, you know, it's just, it's a great policy and I'm, I'm pleased that we're continuing to, to keep that um, at the forefront. Um, and then I wanna say thank you to Chief Pelton who is here again with us this evening. Um, we had a pretty dramatic fire in my neighborhood, which was the second one in less than a couple of months. <laughs> so. Um, it's been a little, you know, a little harrowing over there in Cambridge Grove, but, um, you know, the fire department just does a fantastic job, um, you know, and they do, but when you see them, you know, in action and when you see a fire that's as serious as the one that we had, um, you know, it just, it just really brings to mind how important the equipment and the people are that serve our community and the work that they do for us. So, um, you know, just thank you to the chief and the department um, and all that you do and um, to us, you know, to keep that in mind when we're thinking about budgets um, and things, you know, it's just really to me watching like the amount of fire and then just thinking water, like that's it, we have water, <laughs> you know? <laughs> um, and yet, you know, um, we got it done. So um, it just brought to mind too, I realize there are a number of places in the city that don't maybe have access to, um, you know, the fire hydrants and things and, and maybe thinking about what we can do to to just have that, you know, be thinking about that as we look at, you know, development opportunities throughout the city. Um, and then I also wanna say thank you to Sharon Johnson. Um, what a joy to have her with us for what, 30-ish years? 29-ish yeah. years. <laughs> um, and it just struck me, you know, she has touched, I mean, I, I opened tonight in our invocation talking about community and the power of community and love for others and things like that. Um, and it's just amazing to think she has touched literally tens of thousands of lives throughout her career here in Walker and the joy that she has brought to families and the communities through, you know, the, the sports programs, the Easter egg hunts, you know, all of those things. Um, and just kind of you know, an unsung hero, I think, um, amongst us. So I just wanted to take a moment to thank Sharon and um, her work for us over the years. Um, and then finally, I can't remember if I mentioned this before or not, so I thought I would mention it again, or maybe for the first time. <laughs> and that is, um, and I talked to the mayor and to Steve, um, Commissioner Gilbert about this, but um, there are some uh, community members in the first ward who threw a, um, Common Connection um, reached out to me regarding um, looking at some green space development potentially in the first ward, um, which would be in that area, the old, um, I forget the name now, that golf course, Green Ridge. Um, and it, you know, it's gotten quite a bit of traction actually um, with some um, parties who would be interested in potentially partnering with us um, at the county level, at the city, at the city of Grand Rapids level and things like that. So. 
I'm excited to be continuing those talks and just wanted to make sure that you're all aware that that's something that we are pursuing at the moment to see where it might come out. And um, Frank has been a great help in um, putting that together. So, so um, TBD, <laughs> stay tuned, <laughs> um, you know, and I think that's it for me. So thanks. Thank you. Okay, a couple of things. Um, Last Friday, the um, ad hoc committee for the development on Lincoln lawns um, met again, and we were really pleased with, at least I was personally pleased with the effort that the developer um, made to incorporate all of the suggestions and um, from the citizens and from staff. And um, I think I think we made some really good progress, and um, I think it's. Well, you, well, the mayor can explain a little bit more of our process if we need to do that. But um, at any rate, we're we're uh, making some good headway. Have made some good headway. Um, this morning we had a meeting um, for the Standale DDA, the lighting and streetscape project, and um, just kind of reviewed all the the survey questions that will go out to you now will be the public to. Um, get input on what people would like to see for lighting and streetscape and a sense of place for Standale. And the third thing is a great shout out to the uh, coordinators and of the first concert of the year. It was awesome. There was a huge crowd. It was incredibly hot, but there was like a, a million people there. And, Everybody had a really great time and it was very well organized as usual. Um, but looking forward to uh, the remaining two for the summer. Good. Thank you. Mr. Chase. We had a community engagement meeting last week, Monday, and we went and saw the community garden, which is going great, full swing. Uh, we started looking forward to our next project that we're going to do possibly this summer that we're trying to work on before we start to do the scarecrow and the brief competition again um i joined melanie with the lincoln lawns meeting last week friday <laughs> and that was really good and looking forward to that coming to your commission soon shortly should shame i don't want to hear about scarecrows already we're just starting to get summer <laughs> um i too uh, did, i did not get a chance to go visit sharon and get a cupcake i didn't need the cupcake but i did give her a call to thank her for her years of service and uh uh, wish her well in her seven day weekend. And um, I had a nice little chat with her and I reminded her how much I appreciated her because she would always remind me when I had to get Ava's um, soccer uh, form filled in. And, you know, I just cannot appreciate her enough. So thanked her for all of her years of service. And wow, that's a lot. And she seemed to be very, very happy that day. I think she might have been skipping, I'm not sure. Um, I also wanted to say that I really had a great time with uh, Commissioner Glanville and the mayor at the Kenway Hills Middle School, being able to help judge some of the uh, projects for the urban planning and along with Frank. That was so much fun just watching them uh, get up there. And, and of course the mayor put them on the spot, but they did very, very well in speaking. And I thought that that was very, just a great, a great way that we can kind of uh, immerse ourselves with the younger generation and um, who knows, man, they just really, they really took it upon themselves to know what they were doing and that was great. Um, I want to uh, talk a little bit about um, the signage complaint. As you know, we have some construction going in on Kenny and um, I've had a couple residents within my neighborhood which were greatly affected. They were complaining about the signage that says, no turn on three mile and um, Kenny because they want it to say uh, no turn to through tra traffic or something in that because they've had some events within their, their within our neighborhood that people could not get to because then they are over whether they try to get by remembrance and Kenny it will say uh, you know no cannot get through I forget the wording I should have wrote it down but uh, and it says something like, can I get through about to Waldorf? But it, it makes it sound like you can't get through beyond there and you really can. Um, so we need, to, we need to make sure that we 
look at both those areas because we had some people that were very upset because they were driving around for 40 minutes trying to get to our neighborhood for an event and boy did I hear about it. Um, so I appreciate your help on that. And then I also want to do a shout out. Uh, last Tuesday, um, we had a horrific rain and I was driving through the construction to get to get to Remembrance to, to uh, go to the store. And when I was driving, I noticed there was a huge sinkhole that was created. So I called the non-emergency number for Walker and immediately the police came out. And then shortly after that, we had our DPW out. Shortly after that, Scott Connors came out. Shortly after that, the developers were out making sure that the holes were uh, being filled. So I just cannot applaud our, our uh, team for just always being so conscientious about the, the welfare and the safety of our citizens. So that's great. And today when I was running, I was running by Dollar General and going through that crosswalk, I was stopped by all the ladies over at, because um, they like my dog, but um, by uh, Coventry, the nursing home there. And they were telling me that they are very concerned about the traffic flow through there because they have limited mobility People do not always stop. They wanted to see if I would would have the traffic committee potentially look at putting flashing signs. They've had some close calls there. And I will say, even when I'm crossing with my dog, people do not tend to really heed that sign. And considering that there's a, so much limited mobility that's crossing to go from the nursing home over there, it might really be something that we wanna um, look for and they also were complaining about the uh, the light above uh, the street light that it was still starting to flash again so that's it um, can I build on two of your things? absolutely you three can. of us up here go through this area quite a bit so um, um, yes the light up above is perpetually um, almost perennially has been out yes um, it is that is a dark dark stretch crossing right there and I realize it's um, you know there, there's there's a little bit of a of a, of a convert um, uh, collision of two worlds there. Yes. Pedestrians have the right of way, but they're not stopping on that road either. And when it's not well lit, so that is that is problematic there. Um, and I, I believe those signs came up. Um, um, the flashing signs came up when that crosswalk was put in. It was kind of a let, let's wait and see approach. Uh, if I remember correctly, it's been a few years. Um, but it might be time to relook at, at, at that. I, There's I just, some great solar power. I really options. see it. I mean, and these people are in their little wheelchairs and they yep. or their even walkers, and I just really makes me nervous. Well, with the sidewalk connectivity there on the trail, I mean, now people are going back more and, and more. Forth people there. are going there, and um, you know, they don't. They usually give my dog a treat. They don't complain, but when they do complain, I do. And now, now, now we're getting more of the story here. Yeah, I know. They want. They don't want Oscar yeah, to get hurt. Yeah. That's the. They're problem. there. Yeah. They're worried about. I love you. it. Me, not so much. <laughs> and then the second was Frank. Is thank you for. I saw you making the notes for follow up. Could we add the uh, left turn? I was going to see a resident off of Kinney. Um, I can't. I think it was yesterday, the day before. I can't remember. As I was going off of there, that left turn, I realized that that no left turn is there. But I was specifically going to a residence there, and um, almost got rear-ended myself. It is not. I just. I don't think it's very well from a safety perspective set up because there's no room for you I to agree. get out into the out into off the main thoroughfare because those two the two other two lanes haven't slowed down, and I'm talking about the uh, um, east or the westbound lanes. So your, your rear ends out a little bit because you can't get in that middle lane. But if you get out in that middle lane, you're actually into that intersection blocking this Abraham traffic. So yeah. just there, there's some some adjustment there. Uh, okay. Cool. Aaron, Thank you. I'm glad you brought this up. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, ma'am. I don't know if this is possible. I forgot to. I've had we've had a couple of calls to the clerk's office and I didn't have time to forward them on to somebody. Um, but, but I understand their concern when you're on Remembrance, and if you were to turn onto Kinney, left, you don't see the like no the road close sign, and I saw it today until you're like I don't know ten car lengths in, and then there's the one orange sign on the right hand side, right. and then up again you know way down is the road closure, so people have to go down and turn around. I don't know if there's any way possible to bring that road close sign to be only like 10 feet from the intersection. 
so people know, and, and actually one even by the veterinarian, so people know when they're on Remembrance, when before they turn or with their red stopping to turn, they can see that sign right there. And they go, oh, I gotta go straight. Sure. I I mean, once they, I got a few calls about it, I'm going, oh, that makes, makes sense. And we, we have 90 days yet, roughly. Of, of, <laughs> yeah, and uh, that's the other call. How long is this. it going to be? So let's, uh, yeah, let's uh, um, maybe just. And, and, and no, it's, it's it's great feedback from from everybody on it. But it, it's one of those things that um, um, to to construction, the engineering defense, as they get these things set up, sometimes there is some some tweaking to be done, you know, after the fact. So, but no, I'm glad you brought it up. All right, Mr. Walsh. Okay, I'll follow up on all of your comments here with appropriate staff and Daryl. We're gonna try to make those uh, corrections for you. And then the only thing I have is the next step for the Lincoln Lawns Waterford project will be planning commission on July 21st. And that will be uh, a public hearing for the amended site plan and rezoning. And those two things will be checked to make sure that they are consistent with the ad hoc committee's uh, recommendations. And we'll keep you folks in the loop as well because I talked to Jeff Slugger today, I included that in an email earlier today. Um, we will bring that package forward to you folks so you can look at the your original uh, rezoning motion and then an updated motion. So we'll do that all in one meeting. And I will keep you apprised. If you have any questions, please contact me and I'll feed the information directly to you as we get new information. And is that for the 28th agenda item? Those are copacetic with one another. I mean, that's because we have to make sure we cover the date. Correct. Correct. But we have a date of July 12th, 14th. Okay. Yeah, the, the, the timeline we've laid out with the developer just to give adequate turnaround time is if the planning commission um, forwards another recommendation on the rezoning on July 21st. They would be at the first uh, meeting in August for city commission. I think it's yeah, August 9th. Yeah. And then the second reading is 23rd. Yeah. And then an eight day waiting period. Uh, and in the interim, if they feel confident, then uh, they'll be allowed to start working on their final area site plan for phase one and the infrastructure. So. That's all. Cool. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Daryl? Uh, just a couple of things. Just following up on Melanie's comment about the DDA survey. So look for that uh, to the city commission probably and to the public probably within the next two weeks. We have a DDA meeting tomorrow morning and then uh, the consultant will final, finalize that. But it, it's pretty cool. It's going to be kind of a visual preference thing and then what kind of amenities you'd like to see. And then there's actually a mapping tool in there as well of where you might want to see some things. So hopefully the word gets out. I think they're gonna do some creative ways with QR codes and such to restaurants and stand deals. We can try to capture some good input. So um, so that, that should be out uh, by the end of the week. I think we're looking at uh, targeting, getting finalization on that. So so that, that'll be good. And just FYI, Consumers Energy now has a new online mapping reporting system for just in case, just for your information and you can pass it on to residents. If you see a street light out, you can go right on their map and locate it and it goes right to consumers energy. So there's a link to that on our, our webpage. So just uh, that. Say that, but I don't think that they no, I know. I just didn't know if anybody, everybody saw that. I know Nicole did a posting for it and we, they kind of tested it out. Consumers did in Walker for a few weeks and right. then they rolled it out to everybody in Kent County. So Pretty cool tool. It, it saves us step in the process of reporting it to us and then to DPW and then making the call in so residents can just go right online and then check the status of it. So uh, pretty cool. Um, another thing I think Dan mentioned it during the, the budget or presentation, we did receive our new Zamboni about a week and a half ago, two weeks ago, first electric Zamboni in West Michigan. So I don't think it's quite on the ice yet. We had a couple issues with it that we're resolving before we make the final payment to, to Mr. Zamboni, but uh, pretty cool. They painted it green, Walker green. So it's gonna, it's gonna be nice. We changed the electric outlet and everything over there so we can charge it. 
so that's good. And I think we took delivery on our new plow truck as well this week that we had in last year's budget or our current budget that we ordered about a year ago. It takes about a year for them to build and outfit those. So uh, that one is in as well. We got we received our new Cushman too that we budgeted at the beginning of last year. So uh, so some of that stuff is rolling in, and we'll see how long it takes to get the Tahoes. Um, and other than that, again, thanks for your uh, input and help on the budget. I think uh, the process went really smooth this year, considering all of the uh, struggles we've been dealing with over the years. So thanks again. Thank you. A couple of quick things. Um, it'd be nice in that Zamboni uh, piece, just the significance of that, um, to get some mileage out of that on social media when it's all said and done. So a um, couple of quick things, um, you know, a few thank yous. Um, um, no particular order here. Um, Commissioner Glanville, thanks for taking on the parks thing. I know that that's been a, a um, active piece was we heard um, from Mrs. Eller tonight. I mean, the, the importance of the pickleball courts and just that uh, that health and well-being for the community. I know you're doing a lot of work, so thank you. Um, the two ad hoc committees, um, Lincoln Golf Course, and then really the uh, the DDA um, addressing the the lighting uh, through there. It is time. Um, it's time that we weren't necessarily budgeting because these are extra meetings, but um, seeing the plans for um, the golf course, this is more in line with the master plan now. I'm getting, I've become comfortable with it at this point because it's the right thing to do. Um, and um, we've heard, um, you know, from a public safety perspective, the residents uh, input and so forth. So um, I think we're, we're fast on the track there and um, need to see the, 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 the draft survey for the uh, DDA today. So. A lot of visual um, interpretations in there as well. Um, and then um, this is our first meeting since the Memorial Day Parade. And when you think about that, um, we had estimates somewhere between four to 5,000 people very safely spaced out along the road, um, generally speaking. Um, what a great, I mean, that really kind of flipped the switch and saying, okay, the, this, you know, we're back, we're, we're feeling, um, there is, there's an element of risk to things. And we as a commission, as a city, have stayed um, as really as, as much as, as, as possible out of the politics of all of that. Um, but it, we're at the point now where um, any risk there is something that it, it's um, something that people take on. So it was just, it was nice to see people out. They feel comfortable with it, then come out. And if they don't, then they don't. And uh, we don't judge uh, either way. And uh, it's kind of neat, but um, to cap it off with the concert last, I mean, that was, we had estimates and we, we double checked the numbers a couple of times. We're just about a thousand people. Um, that is a record turnout for one of our concerts. Um, maybe arguably one of the best bands to ever come out of the uh, area here, but uh, um, it just, it was great. Um, and even despite the heat and the, uh, the discomfort for uh, some of us that like it freezing cold, um, there's just a wonderful, wonderful turnout. So um, thank you to our community for coming out for that. Um, last thing I'll leave you with is our first ward commissioner opening update. Um, we currently have three applications in, um, have had discussions with um, one other and there could be potentially two more. Uh, the deadline is tomorrow at five o'clock um, in the afternoon. And I would guess um, probably Wednesday, if we can share those out, it doesn't have to be done tomorrow night, but um, Wednesday, um, the um, applicants will be shared with the entire commission. Yeah, everything that they have submitted, everything in there is uh, for um, the public purview at that point. So um, from that, depending on the numbers will be the, the time setups for the interviews next Monday, um, how early we start, how, how late we go. So we might have to adapt. Um, keep in mind next week is not an official co um, commission meeting. It's a, a, a commission workshop meeting. So we've got some flexibility with the time, but depending how many people, um, if they've applied, they'll have an interview. Um, um, some, you know, we, we, we've got so far some a range of experience of, of people that have absolutely no committee, no, um, about, you know, experience relative to the, the to the city workings. Um, but then we have some that have a whole lot of it. So um, we, we've got some good options already to pick from and uh, optimistic. We have uh, um, at least another one, maybe two coming into tomorrow. So um, without uh, getting in front over the skis, I'll just uh, stay tuned for that in the, uh, um, the packets from them as they come out. So um, anything else for the good of the order? Yes. Do you want me to plan on like a 30 minutes for each one? And then like if our meeting let's, starts at 6.30, back it up 30 let's breaks? Let's see how many we have. Um, 
Because they're going to be prior to 6.30, correct? They know they may go over to 6.30. I think we just want to see. Yes, just because as a commission, we'll discuss afterwards. My only fear, just having been through this before, hours probably too much time. But I almost feel like a half hour is too little time, too. We sometimes are rushed. This is a very important decision for this commission. We need to be able to ask the questions that we need to ask. And I just want to make sure that we have ample time and that somebody's showing up. We don't have the disruption of them coming in the door. I want to make sure we've got time that everybody gets their just opportunity to be able to share why they should be chosen for that spot. So stay tuned on that. I've actually been talking with Shannon this afternoon, just talking about the format and the questions of it and leaning on her background with that recommendation. So what you're saying is we'll decide on the start time on Wednesday? Yep. Okay. Yep. Yep. To be determined yet. So stay tuned for that. But that'll be once we know tomorrow afternoon. By Wednesday noon, we'll have the schedule ready to go for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's no different than, too, as I look at the audience out here. If we have a full house, you know, we tend to let people go. If they're going to be up there for five minutes or so and we're having a conversation, we give that latitude. That's why we don't have a timer sitting down here like others. But if we have a full house, we'll ask them to try and keep it to that two to three minute window. So I think we'll adapt a little bit to how many applicants we get tomorrow. Fair question. Yep. Yep. Steve will be back, but yes. What is the earliest, I guess, at the straw poll then? Five, five, five. Okay. But you could make five. I can do it. I can do three. Okay. So, no, fair. So, and that's exactly what I was thinking time wise. Yeah. And that's where I'm a little, and that's where I'm a little leery, like the half hour. I want to be able to give, um, uh, to be able to dive, dive a little bit into. So, so five o'clock, we'll plan for a start time. Would you mind then updating? So this will be a committee workshop. It'll be basically our commissioner interview process, applicant interview process. Start five at five p.m. Yep, and we've we've sufficiently at this point publicly noticed it far enough in advance. Well, and what we'll probably even do is to give all of us a chance to get in here, get it set up before, because some of us, I mean, that that we're rushing to. You're coming in hot to the meeting at five. Um, probably started at five fifteen, um, but we'll have five o'clock as the start for the piece, and then we can get here, get set, um, get a chance to look at the questions, um, and uh, just go through the, the have Shannon walk through the things that we asked and had asked, um, or that we can or can't ask um, from a HR perspective, um, and not get into hot water there. Cool. All right. Could um, um, yeah, I'm 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 going to defer to Shannon on that one. I'm I'm not um. I I can go either way on that. I think there's two schools of thought. One that we have time to prep for it, but the second thing too is is the um, and, and this is from from a, a Shannon a lesson that she's uh, has taught me. Sometimes when we're looking at that and looking at the candidates. Um, we sometimes will start to prejudge what their answers are going to be and so forth. So there's a prejudiced response to um, potentially uh, anyway. So um, I'm going to defer on that one. That's not my decision to make for them. That's a recommendation from HR. So cool. All right. Anything else? Good stuff. We'll enter entertain a motion to adjourn then. Motion to Shane. I'll support. Chase, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed, we're adjourned. Thank you.